Good evening, everybody. My name is Manderson, and welcome to episode three of Crossover, the crossover event you didn't know that you wanted. Um, like I just said, I'm Anderson at Son of Mander on Instagram and Twitter, and joining me tonight, once again, all the way from Reading, is I'm Dan. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Danderson11. And uh, this show is part of the newly christened TCC Network. Um, check out thecapelesscrusaders.com for um, all of the different happenings, all the other shows we got going on, articles, blogs, um, and you can even find on there some of our sponsors, which tonight uh, we're sponsored by the Beard Balm Brush, uh, which is one of my favorite grooming products. It's probably the only one I really use. Um, they take beeswax and beard balms, put all together, and they form it into what looks like a little Koopa shell, and you just come it through your beard, one go, all done, a few minutes as opposed to oily hands and face and stuff like that. Um, and our second sponsor this evening, um, of course, is Empire's Comic Vault, um, our home away from home. Uh, we do most of our recordings there, and uh, Ben's great. They got pugs, they got hot sauce, uh, comics. Um, right now they have uh, little gift bags, so if you don't read comics, but you know somebody who does, um, so if you know me and you don't read comics, go down there, $40 a bag for up to $90 worth of comics inside this bag, and they're all themed, so you could get, like, I could go down there and buy you um, a Batman-themed bag and just get you a bunch of Batman comics, like maybe one that is the one we're discussing tonight. I don't know what's in it, um, but uh, yeah, that's and maybe, yeah you a superman one if, if i was if the roles were reversed exactly um they're also currently doing a toy drive um so ben is selling toys um you don't have to buy the toys from ben to donate to the toy drive but if you go in and buy some of the action figures um he will discount the action figure 50 percent for you if you're donating it otherwise it's i think it's uh for december i think there might be a discount but you could buy it goes to go to target toys R Us, whatever um, all the toys uh, are going to a good cause. I don't remember the um, the charity that he's partnering with, but he's done it every year that I've, I've known. So go down there, check that out, um, and also buy some hot sauce. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna kick things off um, as we do in our normal show. Uh, we start with uh, round the horn, um, and on our normal show, that's where we go around the the group. Uh, I'm not gonna steal David's shtick, but we talk about the comics that we have been reading. Uh, for our Round the Horn, we talk about either the, the comics we're looking forward to um, or uh, the sporting events that we're looking forward to. So uh, I'm going to start it off uh, with comics tonight um, just because that's, uh, you know, we'll get comics, sports, comics is how it's going to work. Um, so I only, I only highlighted two this, uh, this week. I, did, I forgot to look toward it at next week since we do every other week. But this week I'm only really super looking forward to two. Um, the first one is Doomsday Clock number eight, and uh, and so for for those of you who don't read comics, back in 2016, um, they did a soft reboot of the DC universe. They didn't really like really restart any story arcs or redo any origin stories, but they started a lot of their books off again at issue number one, um, and they kind of revealed that the reboot back in 2010 which was caused by the flashpoint event is having ramifications now that they're just realizing and the doomsday clock story arc is the culmination of all that and um it brings in and identifies that the the watchman uh the that comic is actually part of the dc universe um, it, that was published by dc back um back in the day but it was never officially plugged into the DC universe and now it, it kind of is. So a lot of those characters are showing up. It's been really good. Um, it's very interesting. It doesn't have like any of the, the main characters that really like the Joker pops up in it. Batman's in it briefly. Superman's in it briefly, but it focuses on um, more of the, the Watchmen characters in the DC universe and interacting with people in Gotham. Um, so it's been pretty good. It's been running um, for Longer than I think they originally anticipated because they were supposed to be a monthly, but they've taken a few months off. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about that one. It's always good. And uh, the next one is Winter Soldier number one. Um, and I don't talk about the Winter Soldier a lot, but the Winter Soldier is my favorite. Uh, Movie-wise, is my favorite Marvel MCU movie. 
Um, and also this is the story arc of Winter Soldier um, that that's based off is great. The character Winter Soldier is probably uh, one of my favorite Marvel characters as well. Um, Cap being my number one, um, Bucky Barnes is probably top five. And so I'm really excited that he's getting his own title again. Um, I haven't yet added it to my pull list, to, to my box at Empires, mainly for budgetary reasons. But uh, if it's really good, I might drop something to toss this in. Uh, yeah, so for those of you just joining or this is your first episode, we usually try to pick which one of the things that we are most interested in are the opposite person. So I would say Winter Soldier, definitely out of those two, is the one that I'm most interested in. Uh, my real only experience with that is the movie that you you uh, referenced. So I think that um, I have a little bit of background on him, tiny bit. So I think that would be the one of that of those two that I'd be the most interested in in picking up here in the next couple of weeks. Cool. Yeah, and I like if you like that the character in the movies, they he's probably one of the more accurate to the comics that they they kept up with character wise, and so. Um, just as character development. I think, yeah, I think you'd really like that. All right, so I'll go. We'll move over to sports. I put a few things down here. Um, so the first one is the Army Navy college football game. It uh, happens every year for the last, I think this is the 119th version of it. Um, wow. And it usually tradition, traditionally marks the end of the regular season. So this last week we had the all the championship games, which um, for all the different conferences and we're getting ready for the playoffs, but the army versus Navy game um, coming up, it's not necessarily the greatest football in the world um, because all the star talented players get recruited to go to Alabama and um, Georgia and all those, but it's, they really have a big rivalry. It usually happens when it's snowing. So the, it's just good football weather and good hard nosed football it's usually entertaining to watch. Um, if you're interested in watching that, it'll be on Saturday, December the 8th uh, at noon on CBS. Um, the next one I wrote down is uh, UEFA Champions League uh, matchup for the European soccer fans out there. Um, this should be a good one. It's Tottenham versus Barcelona. Tottenham in a situation where they need to win to ensure they're, they advance to the next round. This is the last day of the group stage. So, um, they should be going for it. Barcelona it usually always goes for it. They have world-class players, so it should be um, really, really fun to watch. That one will be on Tuesday, the 11th of December at noon on TNT. And then the last one I wrote down here as far as games go is an NFL game. It's the Los Angeles Rams, who are currently hold the best record in the NFL. Um, they only have one loss. And they're going to be playing the Chicago Bears, who have been a surprising team uh, this year. Only a few losses. They have a really great defense, and the Rams have a really great offense. So it should be interesting to see how that stacks up. Uh, that one is a primetime game. It's Sunday night, December the 9th, um, 5.20 p.m. on NBC. These are all – I don't know who's watching from where. These are all Pacific Standard Times. If, if you're over on the East Coast, don't tune in at 5 because – it's not going to be on. <laughs> we'll be on yet. Uh, the last thing I wrote there, because um, I was watching um, ESPN 30 for 30 film. For those of you unfamiliar with it, uh, ESPN, a few years back when they were celebrating their 30th anniversary, they decided to get together and uh, make 30 films for their 30 years on various sports subjects. And it was such a hit that they expanded it. So now there's, I think there's 74, 75 oh, wow. of them that continue continuing to churn them out and from any subject that you baseball, tennis, they have long distance running. They have, um, some of them are stories that are well known. Some of them are stories that are not so well known, but they do these deep dives on these, on these stories. So I was watching one last night, um, called the two bills. It's about Bill Belichick, the current coach of the Patriots and Bill Barcel, the, um, his mentor, and they just sat down in a room and they kind of became enemies at one point. They, so they're all really interesting. I would say if you're interested in watching them, you can watch them on ESPN um, streaming service. They have a handful of them available, but if you are really interested in ESPN plus for 4.99 for a month, I think they charge 
uh, for that subscription, but you can watch all of them. Um, like I said, uh, that might be a good thing. If you're a sports fan and you're not, you haven't watched them, I don't, I don't know why do yourself a favor and watch these because even the ones that I turned on to watch and didn't think that I would be too interested in, um, they're all really interesting. And um, start start yourself off with the Red Sox one if you want. That that's like about the 2004 uh, World Series. That's kind of like a group of Avengers there. So they have like <laughs> different characters and super take defense. So uh, that might be a good one to start. But really, anyone. If you have any interest in any sports, um, and if you're new to sports, that might be a good way to dive in. They they range from about 30 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes, and they have, um, like I said, the different different subjects. We I think you could, it'd be a good diving in point there. Well, yeah, I think um, out of the those games that you mentioned, the the Rams Bears game is probably the one I'm most interested in, uh, mainly because I'm a Vikings fan, um, and the Bears need to lose. Um, and I, I did used to, to be a Rams fan back in the day. Um, and so there's, there's still a little soft spot in my heart for them. So I'd like to see them win, even though they did trounce the, the Vikings earlier this season, but the Bears need to, to lose so the Vikings can go to the playoffs and redeem themselves against the Rams later. So. All um, right. Yeah. I think that would be, yeah, it's going to be a good one. Well, uh, so are you ready to, to dive into the main topic? Yeah, so for those of you who were not with us last time, um, the homework assignment I was given to read was um, The Dark Halloween, Batman, the, or The Long, excuse me, The Long Halloween. Um, and I think it was actually longer than both you and I anticipated when <laughs> yeah. we discussed it at first. And because of that, I kind of put it off a little bit later than I should have, and... <laughs> Um, so we're, this is part one of the dark hollow or the long Halloween. Um, I think there's, there's 13 issues, 13 total issues. Yeah. And we've, I've gotten through seven of them and we'll yes. either recap it next time or we'll figure out a way to, to conclude our conversation at a later, at a later time. But, um, so I'll just go through a, a fairly quickish synopsis there's a lot going on so yeah. it might not be as quick but uh try to go through what i understood going on because for those of you also that are new i am very new to this so to comic books so sometimes i was like wait who's that guy what what's what's going on here and, and so we'll see um so it opens up uh at the roman the falcon what uh, what's his first name i don't know uh, carmine on my head. carmine falcon oh, that's right carmine falcon having a party for his nephew at the party um batman is there trying to uh obtain some sort of um ledger so he can figure out what's going on with falcone's money and how dirty he is um he gets into a fight with catwoman who's also there uh selena kyle and they are she's also trying to obtain the same same information but batman is able to grab it and he escapes with it and turns it over to harvey dent and Captain Gordon, not Commissioner Gordon, but he's captain, if yeah. I recall correctly. Um, so he turns it over to them. Um, meanwhile, as Bruce Wayne, um, he is in charge of stopping Falcone's money from flowing through the bank system and it basically is forcing Falcone to stockpile all, all this money. Uh, um, so Falcone's not happy about it. Um, but Wayne is trying to get a grip on the crime situation, I guess. Uh, meanwhile, there's a mysterious murder of, what was his name? I wrote it down. Uh, Richard Daniel. Um, I, he's the, the head of the bank, if I recall correctly. Or, uh, 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 well, yeah, they, he, yeah, he stepped down and then, yeah, somebody, somebody shot him in the street. Yeah, so he gets shot, and then there's all, and Falcone's nephew is also shot on or killed on Halloween. And basically, all they show you is uh, it's a handgun with a sawed-off um, sawed-off serial number, so you're not really sure what's going on. Um, then, so Batman, the story continues on. Batman's trying to figure out why, whenever he's investigating Falcone or around it, Catwoman's around, um, so he's. He's investigating that a little bit. 
she's also um, helping him, which is confusing him why she wants to help him out, but she gives him a tip on where to find all the money that Falcone has basically stockpiled in this warehouse. Um, and so Batman and recruits Harvey Dent, they go and burn, burn down the building and basically burn up all his money. Um, that is on, I think we're moved to meet, no, Christmas. This is Christmas now. Oh, there's and, a, there's uh, a Thanksgiving killing too. Oh, Thanksgiving, yeah. That must be, there was a killing yet yeah, on Halloween, Thanksgiving, and now Christmas, I believe it is, where um, Dent comes home to his wife and there's a package awaiting. Maybe this was a Thanksgiving one. I yeah, there was, yeah uh, that did happen on Thanksgiving. So she, she basically says, don't open it up, and then they show you the house uh, blowing up. So when I was writing, writing notes, I wrote down, uh, Dent is delivered a bomb, and is, I put apparently blown up because I'm thinking, well, I know he turns into Toothpaste, so he obviously is not dead. But then the next issue starts, and he is dead. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what, the, <laughs> what the heck is happening? So the next issue starts up, um, he's dead, and um, Batman is now grilling Mickey Sullivan, who planted the bomb, and they're trying to squeeze him to figure out um, who told him to plant the bomb, who he's working for. Um, he escapes, and they chases him down to where uh, Solomon Grundy is at. So we get introduced to Grundy, um, but they're able to drag him back, and Mickey ends up telling him that um, that Dent is the one that actually killed the nephew. So then that's when they do the reveal. Actually, Dent isn't dead. He's undercover. Um, he or he went undercover as Mickey to try to get some information from some of the accomplices. Uh, or, excuse me, accomplices. Uh, so he's not dead after all. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Life, life is back on track. Yeah. Because I was very confused for a second. Um, uh, then there's another mysterious murder, and now we're all putting it together that, okay, this, whoever this serial killer is, they're doing it on all of these holidays, so they nicknamed yeah. the, holiday, the holiday killer. Um, the Joker arrives on the scene. He's also trying to investigate who the killer is. Um, Falcone's bodyguard is killed by the holiday killer. Joker was right there in the midst of it, so some of his cards are found at the scene, so Batman thinks it's him at one point. Um, meanwhile, Dent is doing some investigating into this whole thing. He finds a connection from Wayne to Falcone, so now he's becoming suspicious of Bruce Wayne's involvement in all this. Maybe he's the holiday killer. Um, I'm spinning forward to New Year's Eve now. Uh, Falcone's son, is, I think it was his son, was killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's what so that must be, <laughs> must be right. Um, and also on New Year's Eve, Batman foils uh, Joker's attempt to, he was going to gas a crowd because basically he was trying to kill the holiday killer and he didn't know who it was. So his method of doing it was just if I kill everybody here, the holiday killer will be also killed. So. But Batman obviously can't let that happen, so he foils that plan. Um, now, spinning it forward, so that was New Year's, the New Year's Eve. So there was a murder New Year's Eve. Moving to Valentine's Day. Right. There's an, another killing that happens, and during the whole, the whole thing, um, Bruce gets entrapped by Poison Ivy, who's now on the scene. He um, gets put under her spell but he doesn't really know what's going on. So he ends up going into um, the bank. I guess now he's the chairman of the bank or he's yeah. uh, in charge of where money goes. So he ends up turning over $350 million to Falcone because Ivy Spell has made him do that. Um, so that spins forward to St. Patrick's Day now. There's another killing um, in Catwoman during the whole uh then she's trying to figure out what's going on with uh batman why is he acting this way she's able to release him from ivy spell also sophia falcone it comes onto the scene to try to help protect the family and for what's going on with all these murders on the holidays um now we're moving forward to so the riddler is on the case this is the the last uh 
issue that we read. Yeah. Uh, not said. So basically, this whole issue is the Riddler is trying to. Falcon has brought the Riddler in to try to figure it out because he can solve any any riddle. Who's the who is the holiday killer? So he starts spinning ideas, and then they go back and forth between him trying to figure it out. Batman's in the Batcave trying to figure out who who it is. So they're just throwing out different theories. Any anyone from Maroni, somebody thinks it's Catwoman, then they think it's Harvey Dent. Then so, um, but it basically ends uh, issue seven with the holiday killer sparing the Riddler's life, and that the big. Riddle that we're left with is why would the holiday killer spare the Riddler's life? Yeah, um, when, when is a killer not a killer? Exactly. Yeah. So I think that was it in the nutshell. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Is there anything I meant that was, um, was important to the story that I? No, yeah, you, you hit all the high points. Um, I'm. I hope you you caught some of the reasons that I I picked this one for you. There's a couple of of key scenes there that. Hopefully you recognize from your favorite tril- Batman trilogy. I remember well, the, the one that really stood out was the burning of the money. Yeah. You know, that was the Joker that does it in the, but um, I was like, oh yeah, it's just like that from, yep. that was the dark thing. I yeah. Believe. And I, I think it's the, the first issue, um, Dent and Gordon are talking and Gordon refers to his friend who's Batman and Dent says, I want to meet oh. him. And then they go up to the roof and they all three talk, um, like they do in, uh, the dark Knight. Right. So that's like, that's like the iconic scene that kind of got brought over almost word for word in a lot of cases on that one. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, I thought there was some interesting things there. There's a couple things that I'm like, didn't coincide with my knowledge of, of a, cause like one of them was Sophia Falcone. Yeah, she shows up. She's kind of a big bruiser, but in this TV show Gotham, she's she's not that way. So I was kind of thinking, oh, they miscast her in the show. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so a couple. Of, I just wrote down a few questions, mm-hmm. and I probably will have a lot more as if we finish it at some point. Um, but the first thing that jumped out, which we already kind of touched on, was how long it was it was longer than i had anticipated it is 13 yeah. different issues so my question is when they release release these issues is it all in one chunk it's like okay like netflix says binge them all or do they release them one at a time and if so how frequently are they released yeah so it was um, a monthly release so they do one issue a month um, the first one came out december of 1996 yeah, 1996, and so then it ran to December of um, 1997 would have been when the last one came out. Um, and then they later, uh, like you could go into a comic book shop and buy the full um, trade paperback if you wanted to now, so you don't have to get, I mean, you couldn't get the individual issues now uh, unless somebody had collected them and was selling them, and they would probably go for a decent amount of money these days. So... so uh Interesting. So the, what was I going to say? Oh, so you said 96, because I, I was kind of thinking that when I was reading it, it had a, a little bit of a dated feel yeah. um, reading it. Um, and then, the, well, the other thing was more just a comic book question, not necessarily about this. I noticed there's some words that seem to be bold in the, in the dialogue. Oh, yeah. I, and it really seemed to be have a rhyme or read like sometimes i was like why is that why is that bold is that important to me maybe it was and it went over my head but sometimes is that yeah. common that they bold random things or is it no usually um in most of the comics that i've read if there's like a bolded word it's like a word that they're emphasizing um anytime that i can remember in the in this it was like maybe the way they would say it that specific word would have been emphasized in their sentence or something like that um, um that's, that makes sense because i was thinking i just read it normal and i was like well why is that bold that's going to come back later but i was, I was like why would that come back later? that makes yeah. that makes more sense. So the way that the dialogue is meant to be meant to be delivered i guess yeah uh, um and then my other question i guess kind of big story picture is where this kind of fits in the the batman 
story because uh, we didn't have like the origin story that we're all anyone who's familiar with Batman is familiar with it. It starts yeah. in the, um, he's already Batman. He's already he's already solving crimes, and we have all these characters on the scene. Um, so is this part of the like the main canon, or is it an offshoot, or what's going on? Yeah. So. Um, this is a, it's an, it's considered an else world story. So it's not, um, in the canon that was happening at the time, but it's also, um, the, the second in a trilogy that Jeff Loeb, the writer and Tim Sale, the artist did, um, the first one, um, they did like three, um, straight Halloween stories. Um, and that compiled into a book that's called, um, uh, shoot, let me look that up real quick. I had it uh, called The Haunted Night. Um, so I think it's Haunted and then K-N-I-G-H-T. Uh, and then there's this one, uh, The Long Halloween, um, which I think because those were Halloween stories, they kind of brought that into the beginning of this and carry that through. Because um, obviously it's not all Halloween, it's different holidays, but it's all just kind of this this haunting of this, this, uh, this murderer throughout the whole year. Um, and then it finishes in a book that's called dark victory. Um, and that one actually features Robin a little bit in it. He's not in the whole thing, but he comes into it. And it's, uh, so the, the, all those three come together. The haunted night does not give the origin story. It's kind of assumed as an elseworld story that you know, the origin of Batman from reading or some other method. So, would it be common then, like, in these Elseworld stories, would they kill off Ben before he turned into Two-Face, or do they try to keep it more more close to the main story? Or So would have been crazy if they actually would have killed him off, or is that not that common? Um, I, I think it depends on what they're trying to do with it. Um, there's definitely Elseworld stories that I've read where they kill off um, characters um, pretty early on. You're like, oh, they're a pretty big deal. And, but and then they emphasize other characters. Um, and oh. in in the DC universe and Marvel as well, uh, there's, there's always other universes. And you just kind of assume that these stories are happening in other universes and they could potentially cross over with the main ones. Um, and there's... And all those, there's always like the, these big characters like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. They're always there's always three characters like that in all these universes, um, and they may have the same villains, but they also may have different people that kind of are a bigger deal. Um, like in in one universe or in the Flashpoint universe, actually, um, the Joker uh, is well, Batman is not Bruce; it's Thomas because Bruce gets killed, but the Joker is Martha Wayne. And so, like, those characters still exist, but there's a little bit of a twist on it. So, I guess short answer is they, they don't normally mess with it that much, but it, it's possible. Oh, okay. It's, and the, the last question, probably not that significant, but I was confused. Um, when they did run into Solomon Grundy, he just basically, the only dialogue he spoke with Solomon Grundy, born on, born on a Monday, is that what he says? Yeah. What's so the significance? And what, yeah, what's going on with that? Yeah, so that's pretty much. Um, there's a a Solomon Grundy poem um, that starts Solomon Grundy born on a Monday, and in a lot of the comics, he just recites the poem. Um, so Solomon B- Grundy born on a Monday, christened on Tuesday, married on Wednesday, took ill on Thursday, grew worse on Friday, died on Saturday, buried on Sunday. So it, it goes through the week of basically like covers his life um, in that end. And I, I was trying to do a little bit of research of where that came from, but I didn't get all the way through that. But that's, that's kind of like just in general, the Solomon Grundy trope is he's uh, quoting that. He doesn't say anything else because he's more or less a mindless being. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I only knew what I know from him from a, uh from Gotham, the, the TV show. So I was like, did yeah. I miss that too? I don't know. But, um, interesting. Yeah. So those, I mean, that's basically all the questions I had off the top of my head when, when reading this first seven. So we got, yeah. What, five, five or six more? Six, six more. Yeah. We're a little bit more, a little over halfway. Yeah. So we got six more to go. 
And I feel like that that Riddler not being killed was kind of a good place yeah, to definitely. end. Like that's a good cliffhanger. It piqued my interest to keep going for sure. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably make sure we. I don't know if that's going to be our assignment the next time or whatever, but uh, yeah. we'll definitely finish it. At yeah, point here. we will definitely finish it. Um, yeah. So I mean, you mentioned you watched Gotham, and as I was doing a little bit of reading about the Long Halloween, I guess um, the current season pulls some uh, storyline from this into it um and i did see there's solomon grundy in uh the current season of gotham is that has he shown up yet or is there, there's just some concept art that i saw grundy yeah yeah he, he has been a, so the one i just finished was i guess season four uh, season five hasn't given quite out yet i don't believe but four okay. he was in it the okay whole time. and he has a love interest as well. Like, that's kind of weird because, so he was, I think he was Falcone's, uh, I don't know how it is from the comic books, but in the in the TV show, he was Fal- Falcone's like main number one guy and then got dumped into a lake with some chemicals and was born out Sol- Solomon Grundy in that. Gotcha, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think that's how it's, it's connected. The, he is like a person that dies and is somehow reincarnated um, as Solomon Grundy, and every time he dies, he comes back still as Solomon Grundy like that. So it's, it's something that kind of keeps recurring there. Um, so I'm, I'm curious. I mean, we're we're over halfway through. Um, did you have any like favorite uh, parts or panels or anything like that? Uh, I like all the Joker stuff. Um, maybe it's just because he's probably my favorite villain of all that. So to see his drawn pretty classically or what I in my mind imagine is a pretty classic uh, description of him and drawing of him I like everything that he was in and actually the Riddler stuff was pretty pretty cool yeah I enjoyed that the kind of theorizing of when they first started him talking about it he's kind of said that matter of fact that I think it's Catwoman and so I think my first thought is, oh, they're leading him. He's going to get led down the wrong path here because we know it's not Catwoman. Yeah. Or I think we know. Um, so, but then I like the Batman go on and then he goes, well, actually, it could be this. And so I, I enjoyed that. Probably number set issue yeah. a lot too because of, I can imagine how that would play out on a TV show or a in movie if they were making that scene in there. So, Probably those those two parts were my favorite. Yeah, I I like issue seven because it's even though Batman and Riddler aren't together, it's like they're having that conversation together um, and making the counterpoints together. Um, I think one of my favorite panels is in the first issue, and it's when Bruce is leaving the Falcone wedding and he encounters um, Harvey Dent talking about like what's he doing and Harvey Dent kind of like brushes off Bruce like well you high society types don't know what needs to be done and it cuts to a close-up of Bruce's face and he's got a hat on and the shadowing is like down over his eyes and so you only see the bottom part of his face like he's already wearing the Batman mask and he and he's saying and what needs to be done and just kind of like hinting at at least for us like hey I'm Batman I know what needs to be done and I do it um, but just kind of emphasizing that there's there's two parts to who he is, but he's really he's just Batman, and he has to play this Bruce Wayne role, and I really like that. Um, and then the um, just a, just a little tiny thing, I think it was the I can't remember if it was Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, I think it was Christmas. The because uh, it was the issue after they encountered Solomon Grundy, I believe. Uh, Batman goes back down into the sewer. And leaves him Christmas dinner. Um, oh right, yeah. Like, like I just like yeah. that 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 little touch. Like he he has to put up and fight Solomon Grundy sometime, but he's really as long as he's left alone, he's harmless. And so he's like, right, right, right. here's here's part of your. We're we're kind of cut from the same cloth where we have to live this life that we don't necessarily want to. So I'm going to share Christmas dinner with you, which I thought was kind of a good uh, little move. It shows Batman has a heart, where sometimes they show that he they try to paint that he doesn't on there. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. That was pretty good. 
Uh, do you have any, is there anything with it that you did not like? Uh, any, any low points or qualms? Uh, not really. Like I said, probably the, the confusion sometimes that I had just cause I was, like I said, I had trouble following some parts, like one couple of points that I was like, wait, is that Bruce or is that Dent? They were wearing similar, um, like trench tails and things like that. So I was like, yeah. who, who's talking about what's happening? So well, that's probably just because I'm new to it and I'm just trying to figure out what, what the heck's going on here. Um, so I wouldn't say it's a low point in the story. It was just the, I had to go back and reread a couple, couple of the panels with like, wait, who said, wait, what, why is that happening? But um, yeah, I think I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it's definitely piqued my interest to keep figuring out what's going on, uh, what's going on next for sure. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything I didn't like about it. The Tim Sale has a very unique art style. Um, and it's not one that you normally see, but the way he draws his characters really emphasizes kind of like who they are almost. Um, like the the Joker, his smile is just like, it's always a little outrageous in a lot of the comics, but in this one, that's really outrageous and kind of elongated. And when he smiles, his face like grows with it almost in some panels. And um, the Riddler kind of looks like the, the Riddler from um, the Batman uh, and Robin series from the 66, um, the old Adam West Batman a little bit. So, um, yeah, but yeah, it's a hard comic to find a, an issue with cause it's so well written. Jeff Loeb is a fantastic writer and, um, has a, has his name on a lot of really great stuff. And Tim Sale, again, just really unique. Um, the, the coloring, the colorist, different, um, different person does the coloring, but they did a, a good job to kind of, highlight like shadow over not shadow and emphasize certain things in that. So I thought it was, I agree. It's really fantastic. It was my, I think my third time reading it, but every time I still find some good stuff in there that I really love. Um, any other thoughts or comments about it? Uh, not that come to mind. Like I said, probably when we finish it off, I'll have a lot more formed ideas and questions about what, what's going on here. All right. Well, um, let's go ahead because we can rate this since it's, it's it's harder to rate s sporting events. I feel like, but um, if you had to, we rate by capes, which David hates because we're the capeless crusaders, and that's why I say we rate with capes because our capes are not being used otherwise. Um, so, out of ten, ten capes, how many capes would you give it? Well, it's hard to hard to rate because I have not a lot to rate it against. That's fair. But like I said, um, I did enjoy it and. It kept my interest, and it's got a lot of the characters that I'm not familiar with. So I'll go. I'll give it a solid eight capes. Eight. All right. Yeah, I think I would probably eight and a half for myself. Um, I just like knowing other Batman material, and just I, when it's other world, an else world thing, I usually don't take any of that that really into account. It's more how much did I enjoy it, how much did I like the art style and stuff. So eight and a half for me. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic book. If you have not read it, um, go out, find it someplace, um, read through it, uh, finish it. Um, and we're, cause we're going to come back to it. I don't know if it's going to be our next comic related assignments or not. Um, we're going to, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so I think that's going to about do it for us. Um, thanks once again for joining us. Uh, this, uh, this coming Sunday, um, if you turn in where you are right now, twitch.tv, V slash the Capeless Crusaders, 8.30 in the morning. Um, the Azorian one, you can have coffee with them. Um, here's kids ranting and raving in the background about something. So he talks about entertainment news and comic news and um, sometimes whatever just pops into his head. Uh, tells you what kind of jammies he has on his toast or whatever. Um, and then the second episode of the Dane Patrol um, has dropped. It dropped last, a week ago. Um, today, I believe, uh, maybe a week ago tomorrow. Um, they talk about Wreck-It Ralph 2. Uh, Ralph breaks the internet. Um, I, I've listened to it. It's, it's pretty good. I haven't seen the movie, so it definitely spoiled some things, but it'll be a while to see the movie. They do a good job with it. Um, that's also, interestingly enough, they're going to do a two-parter on that, just like we're doing a two-parter on this. So we're kind of in sync, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then next Monday, uh, catch us for our normal show, the Capus Crusaders. 
um, around 8 p.m. ish. I like to joke with David, it's 8.07 uh, every week. Um, we're going to be talking about Saga of the Swamp Thing, Volume 1, which David and I are super excited about. And a little peek behind the curtain is something that we've been working on getting on for more than two years. And we finally did it. So there you go. Um, thank you. Uh, one so I guess we should jump in what what your assignment is for. Uh, oh yeah, what next yeah? Time. What is the assignment for next so, time? What I I decided to do an NFL game, not the Rams, uh, the Rams um, game that I talked about earlier, but another one that I'm really interested. In. So this this is the fifth, so not this upcoming Sunday, but the next Sunday before, so the week before our next episode okay. on December sixteenth, uh, the New England Patriots will be taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's going to be, so Sunday, December 16th, 1.25 p.m., and that'll be on CBS, so uh, follow along. It should be a good matchup. Um, the teams have a rivalry gone back for the last almost 18 years that Tom Brady has been quarterbacking the Patriots. Um, should be a good one. Both teams are jostling. They should both make the playoffs. The Patriots, for sure, are going to be in the playoffs. The Steelers are fighting to stay in playoff contention and the Patriots are fighting for a, a first round by um, to get a tie up to that number one or number two seed. So they should be going for it. Even if they have nothing to fight for, they dislike each other. So it should be a good, a good game to watch there. So yeah. tune in Patriots Steelers uh, the 16th on CBS. So it should be pretty accessible for all of the, all you guys out there. If you want to follow along. Yeah. And I just like both those teams. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, so it'll be a torture for you, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll figure out who I, who I hate the least and just, it'll be good. I, I enjoy watching football, right. so it'll be fine. Um, yeah, so our uh, NFL next episode, so two weeks from tonight, uh, that'll be on. And uh, thanks once again to our sponsors, Beard Bomb Brush. Go to beardbombbrush.com. Use the code CAPELESS, which I forgot to mention up top, um, during checkout to get 15 percent off your purchase and uh stay tuned uh we're working out a super special deal for uh one of our fans with them to uh, probably coming up here in the next month or so uh also thanks empire's comics vault um ben you are awesome i appreciate you uh hot sauce pugs and comics um check it out it's at uh, it's in sacramento 1120 fulton avenue suite k is where you can find it if, if you're new to comics, like you're here for the sports and you're new to comics, uh, it's the perfect place to go because Ben is not your typical comic book guy. He's not going to be like, oh, well, in this issue of Silver Surfer, he's like really accessible and helps you figure out like you like Thor and you want to start reading Thor. Where do you start? And he'll toss a couple books at you so you can get started. Um, so go check that out. Um, thank you for joining us for another episode of Crossover a part of the TCC network. Um, you can find anything related to crossover and our other shows at the capeless crusaders.com. Uh, you can find our social media handles, anything you need to know about us. Uh, we're rehauling it. It may have already been rehauled. I should probably figure that out. I'll know next time. Uh, anyway, my name once again is Manderson at son of Mander on Twitter and Instagram and joining me uh, from the distant, distant city of Reading. I'm Dan. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Danderson11. All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time. Good night.